Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, good morning. And I'm trying to uh, speak about uh, a little about our work in our group. Uh, I give the name New Materials Based on uh, 2D uh, Building Blocks. But firstly, it's a good time and uh, great to this everything in our, our life. I'd like to thank you, uh, my sponsors, especially the CPG for, uh, for supporting me uh, in uh, my research and uh, being in several uh, conferences. And, but we can go to uh, graphene. There are a lot of excitements about graphene. Graphene has an uh, impressive uh, electronic, mechanical, uh, and thermal properties, which can be applied for in the several applications, uh, like sensors or make materials. Uh, and uh, there, there is a lot of attention to graphene, uh, even in Brazil, when you have a, a specific center for uh, this proposal. Uh, uh, in the surfing in, in this wave, uh, we have uh, many other 2D structures. And like uh, uh, graphene, we have uh, uh, hexa hexa hexagonal uh, boron nitride, uh, molybdenum disulfite, and many others. And each one uh, have, uh, has a uh, uh, specific properties. So graphene is a good thermal conductor, uh, but BN is not. Uh, but you can so you can mix these uh, structures, the 2D structures, to build new specific uh, materials uh, for many uh, proposal. And how can you do it? You can do it uh, make mixtures. You can ma make mixtures in plane, like a puzzle. You can. Uh, take uh, graphene and BN or graphene and um, this uh, molybdenum disulfide and make this kind of uh, 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 puzzle and uh, tuning uh, the specific properties. Or even you can make Legos. So you can uh, make your plans, uh, you can mix the plans and you can like assembly the plans uh, to make this kind of uh, Van der Waals uh, interaction. So nowadays we have, we have uh, spent like four or five years in our group to develop the pieces to build, to assemble. So now it's time to assemble, to assemble these, uh, these, uh, these, stru these structures. So, and it's time to do it. Now we have the pieces, we have enough a computational resource, and you have a good force field. Like we, uh, I am going to show you uh, many simulations using uh, a reactive force field. So you can make a sim uh, you can make reactions and build and synthesize uh, many uh, structures using this kind of uh, force field. Our group, in our group, in the specific, uh, my part, uh, our group uh, head by Professor uh, Douglas Galvão, who will, will give you a uh, talk and this morning, we uh, have uh, mainly uh, four uh, parts. We obtain, we modify, we assemble, and we make applications with 2D and now 3D uh, uh, materials. I don't have time uh, to talk about every item here. So I choose you uh, 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 obtaining and assembly. But we have a really nice uh, papers uh, about modifying and uh, making some applications like nanocones. Uh, I will start with assembly. So you, uh, you can use graphene and many other 2D structures to build uh, foams or to build materials with uh, really nice uh, mechanical properties. Uh, this is a, a, a foam, and you use a graphene oxide. Graphene oxide is kind of brittle when you have just graphene oxide and you make the foam. But you can put some reinforcements here uh, based on uh, boron nitride, really small quantity of uh, boron nitride, and you have a completely different mechanical properties. This uh, uh, cannot be uh, broken uh, easily. So uh, this is a, a simulation. Uh, about uh, one piece of this, uh, this uh, foam. Uh, when you have the graphene and you put just uh, one piece of boron nitride, you change completely the, uh, the mechanical property. If you see here, when you stretch this structure, you see completely different uh, 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 fracture uh, pattern on this structure. 
when you have a, 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 a graphene oxide, this uh, modification is uh, dramatic, dramatically uh, increased. Like uh, when you have uh, here, you have BN, and here you have uh, uh, graphene oxide, and you see when you put just a, piece, a small piece of boron nitride, the, the failure or the, the structure uh, uh, behaves uh, completely different and this is in, in, this, in this process. It's like when you have a, a balloon, and uh, you have a balloon and a needle, and if you, you can blow up the, your balloon, but when you put a scot tape in the balloon, you, you save uh, uh, the body balloon. Uh, so the bo uh, boron nitride uh, uh, re reinforce the, the structure and, and can uh, make this uh, kind of form uh, uh, much better, much better. Uh, our group have, uh, th that was uh, our first um, form, f uh, but our group have, uh, has been specialized in many other, other forms. This is another uh, a work we have the same uh, uh, graphene oxide, but now you have zirconia to fix the structure or to uh, reinforce the structure. So this is a one example. How can you assemble the 2D materials to uh, build uh, farms? Nowadays, uh, this is a 2006, uh, 2016. Uh, we have not uh, published. Uh, we are using uh, graphene oxide and the hexagonal boron nitride to uh, improve or tuning a uh, thermal conductivity in epox uh, structures. So you see here just a small quantity of graphene oxide and hexagonal uh, boron nitride can improve dramatically the thermal conductivity in, this kind, in these structures. So we have a way to assemble uh, to these structures, but we need the pieces. We need the, the, the pieces of our puzzle or we need the Lego. And we, we have to uh, improve how, how we obtain the uh, graphene or gra graphene and the ribbons or BN and the ribbons or the pieces of the foam or the, uh, the assembled uh, structure. Uh, this is an a example how can we develop it. This is a, a part, experimental part, uh, theory theoretical work and, uh, and it's quite simple. Is um, we have a graph, uh, we have a carbon nanotubes and we we you accelerate the carbon nanotubes and hitting against a <coughs> metal target. And do you see what which are uh, the resulting structures? Uh, we can do it using this uh, quite more than quite modern uh, machine based uh, nowadays on NASA, close to Rice University. And you can use a, a vacuum uh, to make the process to accelerate into, uh, here and uh, hitting against the target. And what we, s we saw, uh, from the experimental point of view, we see uh, this uh, kind of uh, 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 structure. Uh, uh, when I saw it uh, for the first time, I guess it is uh, graphene and the ribbon. And uh, this was confirmed by simulation and uh, uh, more experimental uh, data uh, here. So uh, uh, here's an example uh, about the simulation. You have uh, the, uh, the carbon on the tube and you hit against this uh, me metal. You see the, the stress pattern uh, will concentrate in the center because the, the structure bent inside and broke these uh, this, uh, bonds and open. So you can do uh, really uh, nice uh, carbon nanoribbons or nanoribbons made by carbon uh, <laughs> in a specific way just using a really easy process. Uh, here is this for uh, single layer graphene uh, nanotube. But you can do the same for a multi-layer and the process is completely different. When you against, you don't have the bending into a uh, carbon nanotube, but you have the flatness in this, in this part and you see uh, two uh, graphene, uh, uh, nano, uh, two graphene or a bilayer graphene nano ribbon. We are improving. This is a quite uh, um, 
general method. We have improved this process and studying for boronitride nanotubes. And you see, uh, even the process is quite different because you have a, a different resulting structure. Uh, you, you can do the same with uh, boronitride and obtain a quite nice uh, boronitride uh, nanoribbons. And you can see this will be uh, published, uh, I guess, in this week, uh, you see, for boronitride. So using this really easy method, you don't need chemical uh, approach. Uh, you just use a machine and you, and you can obtain the pieces for assembling and using your application. But I said you a, a lot of good words. Uh, it's a general process, it's a one step process. You don't need to clean the carbon nanotubes, the uh, carbon on the ribbons, and it's chemical free. Uh, uh, give you a high quality graphene on the ribbons. You can use even for electronics. You don't need to use just for forms or just for uh, mechanical properties. But uh, there's a quite a big problem here. You have a high initial cost because you need the death machine. That machine, there's just two machines in the world. One is in NASA and another is in, in the neighbor in the, the Rice University. So we need a really easy way to get carbon on the ribbons because uh, uh, we, we are uh, mainly in Brazil and uh, we have to develop a, a low cost uh, way to get uh, carbon in the ribbons. How can we do it? Even me, a theoretician, can do it using uh, this, this approach we have developed uh, in the uh, last year. And the show is a quite easy. And I guess here in the lab, in the chemical lab or any lab, even in your kitchen, you can do it. Uh, here is the multi wall nanotubes, and uh, we functionalize the carbon nanotubes using uh, uh, two groups like uh, OH and COH. So, this, uh, this kind of founder you can buy for a kind of $500 uh, one kilo, it's quite e uh, cheap. So, you use uh, two pounders, and you combine the two pounders, and you open or unzip the carbon nanotubes and get carbon on the ribbons. This is quite really easy method, but nobody have, uh, has uh, tried before. So this is how can we do in the, your lab, in your kitchen. Uh, use a pounder and put two different pounder and use mortar and pestles uh, in your lab, your farm, uh, in, your, uh, in your pharmacy or lab. And uh, it's kind of cooking. and you macerate. It's kind of what you do with your onion or garlic. And you see here uh, water, a lot of water. And how can you open the carbon on the tubes using this really simple approach? And I will answer it for you, but I don't know why the people don't try it before. Uh, so it's a quite of a base chemistry. You use uh, OH and COA, they combine. Here's an example, the mass spectrometry will corroborate with uh, what I'm, 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 I'm telling you. Uh, here you have uh, like the water formation and some peaks here show you the COH, CO2, sorry. And uh, the method we have proposed is uh, when you have the CO, uh, the COOH and OA, they will combine to result in the water and the CO2. This is quite easy. So it's a chemistry, basic chemistry. And this is a, this a, a reaction will provide you energy. This energy, the local energy, is quite enough to break the CC bonds. We have simulated to make a, like a quite uh, complex process for molecular uh, simulations point of view, you, we divide this, uh, the simulation in two steps. The first one, we calculate the reaction. How much energy uh, this uh, reaction will provide for, for graphene, for carbon nanotubes, uh, <coughs> functionalized, functionalized carbon nanotubes. And and uh, if, if uh, this energy is enough to break the carbon-carbon uh, bonds and to open, 
to open the graphene, to open the, the carbon on the tubes. I have used lamps for it, and uh, uh, here I'm going to show you uh, ReactSF, but we have uh, like compared with uh, density functional theory as well. Uh, here's the first, the, first, uh, the first step. The first step, we have the initial uh, state and the final stage, and you use the NAB, some method will create many uh, replicas here, and we calculate uh, many replicas and optimize the replicas to try to uh, see the, the reaction uh, path in the direction. And you see for many uh, distance between the, these two tubes, um, <coughs> how much energy we need uh, to uh, start the, the reactions. We see here just the macerate can start the reaction and how much energy it will be need or it will be uh, provide. You see this, uh, this, um, this reaction needs to be energy assistant. So we need to provide energy to uh, transpose uh, the barrier. But after you, after you transpose this bar uh, <coughs> barrier, uh, you saw this uh, exothermal uh, reaction and the, this will provide you 25 uh, kilocal per mole. This energy is enough to break the carbon-carbon uh, the carbon car carbon bonds. To simulate it, we use a, a, um, a method when you have the, the carbon, the <coughs> carbon on the tubes and we provide just in one part, in one specific part, uh, more energy or extra energy to simulate these local energy provided by uh, reactions. Uh, we uh, call it uh, by uh, heating spot in this area and we simulate for several uh, uh, energy values. And you see just 14%, just 14% of provided energy by, en uh, by the reaction, just 14% of the, the energy from the, the, the reaction uh, it's enough to break the carbon-carbon bonds. So the method, uh, the method is uh, we could uh, uh, simulate uh, this, uh, the method and compare it with uh, experimental results. And what is really nice, this was uh, our first uh, paper pub published yet, uh, published last year. But this is a really general method. And uh, we have improved the method a lot because this can provide you like uh, five or ten percent of carbon on the ribbons. But nowadays you can improve this uh, the scalability <coughs> of the, this method and use many others uh, like functionalized uh, carbon on the tubes, which will provide you uh, carbon on the ribbons. Uh, so this uh, 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 paper we have published like this year. I guess uh, three weeks ago, and in the carbon, you see many other ways to open carbon on the tubes using just basic chemistry. So I provide you two ways to get carbon on the ribbons, or two ways to get uh, the piece to make the to assemble or to make foams, or to use for many other uh, proposal. I will show you now uh, my last uh, uh, my. <coughs> My last slides or my 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 last uh, work here uh, for you. This is uh, a work we have developed here at Unicam. So there's no uh, any international collaboration. Use uh, like uh, with Professor. Um, uh, uh, sorry, Stanislav. Sorry, uh, Stanislav, and uh, we have developed a way to when you have just graphite, it's quite uh, simple, and you can burn graphite layer by layer and get like a graphene. So it's an easy method to, to do, and uh, we have developed here uh, at Unicam. So it's a, a quite simple. You use a, like an electron beam here in this, in this uh, part, and you can uh, use, uh, when you have uh, like the suspended uh, uh, graphite or you have a uh, graphite on substrate. When you have the suspended <coughs> one, uh, you see uh, uh, burning uh, layer by layer graphene. So you see one layer burn, another layer burn, and when we have uh, uh, substrate, you see like just a hole 
in the, <coughs> the, the sample. I show you like here. So to make the simulations, there's a trick here. Uh, why the people cannot do it easily before the Stanislav uh, uh, experiment? Because there's uh, cold walls here. <coughs> So the, the trick in the, the experiment and the trick in the simulations is provide code walls, protect the edges of graphene. When you protect the edge, because the edge is the, the more reactive part of graphene, in this, uh, the, the graphite in this, this case, you can like uh, burn uh, the layer, the complete layer of graphene before the subsequent one. So to make the simulations, we use like graphite, and uh, uh, we simulate the graphite, uh, in this case, two layers, and put oxygen. And it's a, and we use a ReactSaf, and uh, this is uh, some uh, parameters, and, uh, but the trick here is uh, protecting edge. Uh, this is in the experiment, this is in the simulation as well. And uh, this is, uh, show you, try. This is uh, like uh, the simulation, then you start to burn graphene layer by layer. You see like the first, when you create enough defects in graphene, these effects will increase or consume the, f the first uh, uh, layer completely before you start to consume this, the second one. So when the, the first layer goes on, they start to make many defects in the second layer and burn the second layer as well. As you see here, this is a kind of uh, some snapshot of the simulation, but uh, uh, I like this uh, top view, because uh, see like uh, when you start your simulation here, I'm not showing you the oxygen atoms. And uh, when you start the, the, when you protect the, the edge, the, the oxidation or burning start uh, making a lot of defects around the structure. So these defects will increase uh, so fast and burn the first one because this area is much more reactive uh, than uh, the second one, the second layer. So the, the system prefers, <coughs> prefers to burn the first, the first layer, the energetic uh, uh, balance uh, prefer to the, the first layer and the second, the second after in the second layer. And, and here you can, it's over. And here you see like uh, uh, some uh, the carbon-carbon <laughs> bonds. You see clearly uh, the first layer is over, and when the second layer will start. This is uh, like a Brazilian uh, uh, collaboration here at Unicamp in CCS. And uh, and here how the 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 burning occurs. The first. In the first moment, you have the, a complete, combu uh, uh, complete combustion, combustion, and in the second, in the second moment, you have incomplete one. So, like uh, 25 minutes, and that is uh, the main conclusion of this work. And uh, now, just to summarize what I have uh, tell, uh, told you, like uh, we are working with assembly and uh, obtaining uh, the pieces to assemble. So I have shown you like uh, how can you assemble using uh, a boron nitride and graphene oxide and how can you obtain the pieces of your uh, puzzle or your Lego. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and invitation. Questions? 35. Are they doing the chemistry correctly? Is there a physicist? Yeah, I am a physicist. <laughs> uh, I have a question. Uh, if you got the first part which you share with two layers, you use a very small one to protect the other one, the bigger one, from a fracture. So I was wondering why a very small piece of, you know, of, of this second layer is able to protect a very big one and, and, and why the fracture stops there and why the fracture stops in a different point so like because I, I, I was supposing before you compare and stuff 
my initial guess, you know, is that the fracture should start at the point where you start putting the other layer. But, but in both cases, the, the fracture starts at a different point. Like I show you. But ah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so if, you, if you look at, <coughs> at the bottom, the fracture starts at the edge. Yes, exactly. And, and, and not at the center. So I was wondering why this very small piece of, of the second layer protects the whole. Yeah, like you, you have a reinforcement in the, in the center, like uh, a, a, good, a good way to think when you have a balloon, a party balloon, and you use a needle to blow up the balloon. So when you put like a scrap tape, you protect that area. Like in this area, you fix, you anchor this area, so the stress don't concentrate in that, that, that area. So the stress will be concentrated in the edges. So because of this, uh, the, the wheel break in the in the edge. You do. It's kind of my guess. When you have, have you tried with balloon? Huh? I didn't find a movie to show you. So the the patch of this uh, boron nitride is that boron nitride, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the, the boron nitride patch uh, protects the surrounding. Exactly. It's fix anchor that, that anchor part. So, so that the, uh, the stress, is of, instead of spreading out the, throughout the, the whole uh, sheet, uh, it, it goes to some points far from the, uh, yeah. from the patch. Perfectly. And, and okay. so the energy concentrates in other regions away from the patch. Yeah. So you how, how that... Uh, this is a well, quite. There's something wrong with the this is a, a, a quite a quite general because you, you can do the same with the zirconia as well. Like uh, you need just uh, some something to anchor uh, the, the the that point. Yeah. So because you have uh, the van der Waals interaction between the gra the graphene and another the boron nitride or zirconia here, and uh, when you have it, like uh, you anchor that area, so yes. you avoid. Uh, you avoid the stress concentrate that that part. <coughs> and this is just not just confined to the very neighborhood of the very vicinity of the patch, but it's also uh, a few <coughs> uh, atomic it's radii. It's around. It's the same concept on concrete. When you add some pebbles, yes. then then you increase the mechanical strength yeah. of the. Have you, have you tried uh, different formats? Yeah, this is a, like I show you uh, a, a general concept. But it, yeah, you, you went, because uh, here I have shown you just a small piece in the, in the but you can try with uh, many different um, shapes, you know? But uh, this is not quite important because the stress will be concentrated far from that area. Not, it's not like, uh, sensitive to local uh, effects, really local effects, like on the, on the edge. Can you envisage a patch that uh, would do harm instead of good to be? So it makes it make it weak, weaker. Can you? Is it possible, or it's just? You are, uh, the question is: yeah. Is there chemistry there? Or it's just because the, the, the patch absorbs the energy? Yeah, it absorbs the stress, no? Like, the stress. Yeah, like a... Uh, that's a good question. It's a good question, but like, uh, because here is a kind, let me try just to show you, it's a w w uh, Van der Waals interaction. So the Van der Waals interaction will fix that, that point. So I don't believe uh, any like, uh, weaker like make weaker that 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 part we you are going to reinforce <coughs> that part maybe you can make a same many patches and make another area weaker than the the like say, uh, like say if you, you use two or three the, qu the question is in principle it only works if you have a stiff reinforcement right yeah exactly so the question if you do the opposite if you add a small Graphene piece into boron nitride. Yeah, I've tried it. it uh, yeah, work. yeah. It works. Works, but uh, like uh, seamless. Like uh, because 
but the difference is so big, so you don't reinforce enough to see any like uh, do, mechanical. Do you de-enforce bottom right drive? No, you don't de-enforce. We you reinforce, but not not that much. You see, like because it's like when you have a concrete. Concrete and put like a piece of paper. Like yes, uh, you know. reinforce a little, but you cannot see it. Is there ah, okay. Yeah, when you put inside, I yes. Isopor, new word in Spanish. Isopor. <laughs> yeah, but here you you have two D structures, so you have one on top and not. But you you are uh, correct. I, I understand. Uh, so it's not it's not you you never. Uh, no, when you have you just you have the, the assembly, no. But when you put inside, like when you have conc uh, concrete or anything, and put inside, like when you put an epox. Well, when you put in epox, for example, in epox in the, in the, the structure, like in the combined structure. So in this case, you can make weaker or, or harder. Yeah, when you use some yeah, metal nanoparticles, for example, if you deposit um, uh, nano nanoparticles, you can like make some uh, breakings in graphene to make that area weaker. Yeah, but but via no, on the top. Yeah, you can you can cut graphene using some ni uh, nickel uh, uh, nanoparticles, for example. Yeah. So, but these involve chemistry, and uh, here uh, the idea is of Van der Waals interaction, just Van der Waals interaction. Okay, so uh, uh, when you say just Van der Waals interaction, so those simulations are not with the uh, uh, reactive forces? Yeah, it's, it's reactive force fields because you need here, in the reacts, yeah. in reacts force field, you have a Van der Waals interaction okay, as so well. But, but there's also a binding. Yeah, here because you, you cannot see the, the breaking okay. without a reactive. What I was going to ask you is that if you can see as you increase the stress there, you can see the vibrations on the bones increasing and then maybe locate where the bones going to break and what happens to the, especially what happens to those vibrations right underneath the patch. If the, like the pad, presence of the patch dampens the vibrations uh, or not, can you see this kind of factor? Yeah, we can see uh, the theoretical, but nowadays I I can I, I don't have any news about any news about uh, experimental. Of course, you wouldn't be able to see experimentally, but it would be a nice way to see how exactly how the effect of having the patch there yeah, is uh, making it stronger. The the change. Like if you see some transfer of energy to the patch, or the, I don't know. Yeah, it's. it's it's a kind of anchor, no? You like the the atom, like in the bottom, will be anchored, and then on, on using the top. I have a picture. I'm not sure if it's correct or not. Uh, normal, in the absence of the patch, all the stress must go to the bottom. When you have the patch, the stress can be alleviated from the bottom and propagated into the absorbed into this patch material. That's uh, some sort of a, of a buffer, a buffer of a energy <coughs> absorber when you stress. It seems to be something like that. So that uh, yeah. the patch is, is rigid. Is a more rigid material than the rest. So rigid, yeah. They've done the other way around. They have done. Uh,
are yeah. and added a, a software material and that also helps uh, the yeah, yeah, you have to see the what the is going. Going. <coughs> In microscopic scale, when we use the, the patch like that, the, the stress concentration depends uh, of the relative stiffness of both material. And normally, uh, you try to put a patch with a stiffness not too much uh, stiff than the, the material because if you put that uh, the stress con concentration arrives in the in the edge interface. of in the interface yeah in the, uh, here yeah sure you know? yeah it's different because here the interaction is i guess is uh, it's bigger, the interaction, the Wonder Wall's interaction is bigger than when you have the micro scale, in the micro scale, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but you see, like, even for zirconia, because zirconia is not, not that, uh, uh, not that small, not that, like, uh, uh, like a BN, uh, and you have, like, the same effect. Mm -hmm. The interaction, the Wonder Wall's interaction is locally, so you can, like, uh, uh, anchor the structure much better than in micro scale. Last discussions. Any further questions? If not, let's uh, thank uh, Pedro again. <laughs>